Blender Conference 2024 again, and this time I'm with Mike Hodgetts uh, from UK. Mike, hi. Nice to meet you. So would you be able to explain who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I said, my name's Mike Hodgetts. I'm the head of CG for Simplates.com. Yeah. Uh, we produce fully 360, um, loopable and seamless uh, background plates for virtual production car processing. Yeah. Um, it's a really exciting and really interesting way uh, and like a really novel way of yeah. doing car processing for virtual production. I've obviously researched Simplates, fantastic mm -hmm. idea. The guys did a lot of renders of cities, nature land landscapes in mm -hmm. summer, in desert, in winter. Uh, different times of days. Yeah, absolutely. But they are not available for purchase. Are you guys planning to make so them accessible? It's because of the way that we work, a lot of our workflow is specifically geared towards working with production studios and yeah. with um, LED stages. Yeah. Um, so it's less geared more towards like less geared towards like an individual artist to purchase them and more on like a business to business basis. I see. So um, our CEO, Alex, he uh, lives in LA. He works very closely with a lot of the- Alex Pierce. Alex Pierce, yeah, Alex Pierce, uh, 3D.com for his main, um, main website. He works very closely with a lot of the stages, like the LED stages around Hollywood. Um, and has a number of contacts with. So if I have a virtual production studio, yes. I would contact you and be able to purchase. Absolutely, yeah. So the way that our licensing generally is geared at the moment is that you would license a plate for a production, um, and it would be on a kind of a one-time basis uh, for like an individual license per production. Yeah. Uh, but then we also will have expanded models for things like enterprise uh, users and, you know, creating more kind of custom, um, like custom like product licensing, I guess. But it's still very early days and we're still figuring a lot of stuff out. But um, yeah, the best way for, I think, if anybody is interested in using our content is simply just to get in contact with us via the website. I see. Uh, another qu question I had is yeah, that all the environments are moving for mainly for car shots, mm -hmm. but are you guys planning to do anything like, you know, with a still camera, but maybe crowd animated around? Crowds are definitely something that we're, we're interested in and we're looking into. Um, we're still developing the pipelines for these. Yeah. Um, in terms of still plates, you know, our sim plates can absolutely be used for uh, still images already. You know, you could just take a single frame of it yeah. and use it as a background. We have also had um, a number of, we've developed a, plate, a couple of different plates uh, that aren't yet available on the library because we're still kind of working on them. Yeah. Uh, that are kind of static cameras, such as, you know, a car parked at a traffic lights with, you know, the traffic moving around it. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, plans for that sort of thing, but less about kind of, you know, a single still image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we're open to any ideas that people have. If, you know, production studios are wanting specific content, you know, they can get in contact with us and we would welcome that kind of feedback. Oh, so custom orders are also Absolutely, an yeah. Um, our general model is that, obviously a custom order is gonna be a bit more expensive than maybe a single license, of course. Of course, but um, if it's a co if it's a piece of content that we could reuse for our content library, yeah. then there's a wider discussion to be had there about whether or not we can, you know, do okay. a bit of a deal with people to say we'll only charge you the licensing, but then we get to reuse the footage and resell it as part of our content library. That's really interesting. A bit a bit uh, about technical aspects mm -hmm. of uh, production of such stuff. Usually it was reserved per project, you know, mm -hmm. someone working on whatever car shot, they do it custom in-house or, yeah. or whatever. Your guy, you guys are democratizing that. Mm -hmm. Production-wise, it's really heavy to render one single uh, 360 environment, yes. super heavy stuff. You guys are doing it in motion. Mm -hmm. It's thanks to Render Network. I'm Absolutely. Aware. Mike here with... Uh, uh, collaboration with Alex Pierce, they're recipients of Render Network grants. Could you talk a little bit about your experience, how that was, how it helped? Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, the, first of all, the Render Network grant helped enormously. Um, it pretty much has pushed our 
kind of business pipelines, probably about 12 months into the future. Um, you know, we've really been able to accelerate our business growth by receiving this grant. It's been incredible. The support that we've had from the Render Network team from like a technical standpoint has been fantastic. Um, and in terms of like the like render speeds, we actually had a very um, a really good use case and example the other day, where we were on set on a production yeah. and the director wanted some changes made to one of our plates. You know, he had a little bit of feedback of um, you know, can we make X, Y, and Z changes? Now, normally, you know, if we were rendering that locally, it would have taken us three, four weeks yes. to have re-rendered the whole uh, plate. Um, <laughs> as it stood, the director gave us that feedback on the Friday night. Right. We made the changes. Classic. Up, classic, right? <laughs> Uploaded the, the corrected uh, files to the render network Saturday morning. Yeah. And by Saturday afternoon, we were on set shooting with the, correct, with the new plate. We were turned around the whole thing in less than 24 hours. So which Render was Network was incredible. It was so useful. And having these sort of really quick turnaround times has been instrumental because it means that we can work directly with producers and with studios and with directors. And we can have that kind of quick turnaround time. Now, obviously, I'd rather people didn't do that. Yeah. But, you know, it does allow for that I kind mean, of it, speed it, turnaround. It's a fantastic example in real world production on set like superb and it's also a really heavy use case Absolutely. you guys are doing 360 is always a challenge and that's all done in blender you you are big on yes. procedural set setups in Blender. that's correct yes so all of our sim plates are created in blender and then rendered in octane yeah um from a procedural standpoint we use a lot of kind of geometry nodes proceduralism yeah, yeah. to create random environments to create random selections of buildings um, there's some really cool features that Octane has that allow us to be able to, to do this really simply and very e efficiently and performantly as well. It's things really, like really scattering, yeah. things like scattering foliage. Um, for me, the the ability to scatter at render time yeah. and scatter instances from in render time with the Octane like material scattering is insanely powerful it's yeah. it's fantastic and it's one of the for me it's one of the big reasons why we chose this pipeline so it's still octane scatterer within blender yes yeah, yeah we could we use the standalone um well we have a combination of using the custom build of octane for blender yeah um and then exporting that as an orbix file and working with that in, um, in, in Octane standalone before uploading it to the Render Network. Did you know that uh, Render Network is currently in closed beta for native Blender support? Oh, for Cycles? Not for Cycles, for Octane as well. Oh, fantastic. Yes, that would sir. make... I did hear about this, yes, and that would make our pipelines... Well, it's interesting because there's, there's a number of things that work in standalone that are just a little bit easier to do in standalone than they are in like Blender for Octane for Blender. Um, some of the light settings, for instance, some of the volumetric lights, uh, we found that it's easier to get the results, the visual results that we were looking for in standalone as opposed right. to using it in Octane for Blender. But the fact that if we can upload directly from Blender to the render network, that could, again, make our pipelines even more efficient, mm. which would be fantastic. Interesting. Curious stuff you're doing, mate. Yeah, thank you. Mike, uh, for those who would like to ap apply for a grant, would you have any advice on the steps to take? Um, I mean, it's a really, really simple process, to be fair. You simply go to the, the website, which I can't remember the URL off the top of my Brand head. Renderfoundation.com slash grants. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you simply enter name, email address, and it's a 500 word uh, maximum 500 word description. Kind of description of what your project is and why you would like a, a, a grant. Um, it's a really simple process. And, and after that, someone gets in touch? Or? Yeah. So yeah. somebody then get in touch and kind of let you know and have a discussion about that process. Um, and then you, you look at your balance on Render Network and see that hopefully there's a load of money in there, which is lovely. <laughs> nice, mate. 
Thank you. Uh, how do you like the conference so far? Love Plan the Conference. It's, it's my fourth time coming and I absolutely love Plan the Conference. It's so great to see the, the amount of people that really come out and are be... It's quite different from others. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's partly because Blender as a piece of software has always been very, very community driven. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to come here and hang out and like talk with lots and lots of different people who are all very excited and using Blender in very different ways yeah. is, is a wonderful experience and it's really fantastic. Yeah, well, it's my first one. I'm quite amazed. How I, are you enjoying it? I, I met a lot of fantastic people and the feel. Yeah. Uh, just so if, if you don't know Blender Conference, it's quite exclusive type of conference, under a thousand people. So it's quite easy to network with almost everyone in here especially in the evenings after yes. all the talks are done. Absolutely. Mike was one of the presenters here yesterday talking about audiovisual, the yes. visualization. Yeah. I will link his speech uh, in the video description as well, because it's quite curious for some of you, you know, who are trying to do the same. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you for your yes, speech. Absolutely. You are very welcome. Mike is part of the family who tries to improve Octane uh, for Blender in this case and Render Network. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Enjoy. You too.